The Quad Report now has some small visual changes and enough driver assistance stuff, like radar crews, to bring it up to German levels. At least, that's the on-paper argument. Not one of the 2017 model's visual upgrades is metallic. The changes include a new plastic grille, inspired by the design language of the Alfieri concept car, updated lights, and some very subtle differences between the sportier Grand Sport and the more luxurious Grand Lusso versions, two new trim packages. The Aero guys have been busy, too, with a flat floor and a new air shutter that lowers drag by 10% and by itself improves the fuel consumption by 3%, anything else is down to stop start. In a tech world, the Quad Report is the anti-Tesla. There are no plans to give the big boy any form of hybrid power much less a plug-in hybrid powertrain. Maserati's engineers look at you funny for mentioning hydrogen fuel cell or battery electric power. Instead, Maserati loves a good internal combustion motor, which is odd because it doesn't make any right now. The diesel V6 not sold in the US comes from nearby VM Motori, while Ferrari knocks out the fun stuff, in, admittedly a plant it built with Maserati's money. The car again comes with a choice of two gas engines, neither of which has been touched as part of this update. The S and all-wheel drive SQ4 models use a 3.0-liter twin-turbocharged V6 that makes 404 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. Interestingly, an updated, 424 horsepower version of this engine that launched in the Levant crossover doesn't make it to the big sedan. The QP's other engine is the GTS model's twin-turbo 3.8-liter V8, which puts out 523 horsepower and 524 pounds to foot. The V8 is only paired with rear-wheel drive because adding a front drive shaft would be a packaging nightmare that's not worth the small number of added sales. Both engines are hooked to ZF's ubiquitous 8-speed automatic transmission, which works cleanly and efficiently. The strength of the V8 engine is obvious from the moment you find the mysteriously hidden start button, waking it up with threatening depth and constrained anger. Then you push the sport button and the exhaust valves open up to give the engine its full voice. Its turbochargers don't follow the trend to nestle within the hot V, but they still manage to be properly responsive at every point in the rev range. Unlike most of the big German motors, this V8 is significantly over square which makes it feel like it wants to rev and rev and it always feels like a bit of a surprise when the limiter kicks in and the auto changes to the next cog. At its core, the Quadiport is a solidly good car, but it always was. It just lacked the kind of technology that buyers of big German sedans took for granted. Now that it has that tech, most of it, at least, it's a much more credible contender. It's just a shame it's not better in some areas that seem pretty visible, because the core of the car deserves it.